refused to rest on the seventh day. The Ace Sundays have been blessed with a pair of miraculous comebacks. Yesterday, the amazing Eric Burns extended the magic to Saturday with a stunning shot. Ace fans haven't seen a hitting streak like his in a month of Sundays. Will Sunday be fun day for the A's again? They take on the Royals next. The Major League's longest current hit streak now belongs to Mr. Excitement, Eric Burns, who hit blackjack yesterday, getting ready in his own way. And Mr. Cy Young, Barry Zito, also getting ready in his own way, looking to rack up a few Zs here at Kauffman Stadium on a Sunday afternoon. It's the finale of a four-gamer between the A's and the KC Royals. Good Sunday morning to you. Welcome to A's Baseball here on Fox Sports Net alongside Ray Fossey. I'm Greg Papa. We've had a couple of wild Sundays in a row. What will today bring? But we may have used up our weekend quota of wildness yesterday, Ray. Seven to six thriller highlighted by Eric Burns in the top of the ninth. I thought it was the most exciting game of the year, bar none. And a great way to end the month of May. A, a positive record for the athletics. But Eric Burns, he's been doing it. But watch this. Dropping ahead of the bat on a 96-mile-hour fastball from McDougal. And Terrence Long almost got caught. Burns he was so excited running the bases he actually sprinted around the bases to get back in the dugout to get the congratulations from his teammates but what a great victory for the athletics especially coming behind once again the way they did he went around the bases faster than terrence long did on the inside the park home run i think early in the year he is flying why not a 21 game hit streak barry zito 2-0 with a 2.18 in his career against the kc royals against chris george today a fellow left-hander as he looks to put the royals bats to sleep and win three out of four on the weekend. Baseball is brought to you by Comcast. Proud to be the Bay Area's new cable company. Call 1-800-COMCAST for cable TV and high-speed internet service. By Jack in the Box, where we don't make it till you order it. By Nextel, how business gets done. Call 1-800-NEXTEL-9. By MGD, cold filter what you don't need. Keep what's good, MGD. And by your local Bay Area Mercedes-Benz dealers, who remind you, that's life here. We're part of it. One last game to go here at beautiful Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. The A's after a 17 and 10 April went 14 and 3 in May and here on the first day of June. They are 31 and 23 overall trying to make it three out of four this weekend and the A's will bat this way. Of course Eric Burns with Kenny Lofton losing his 26 game hit streak yesterday. Burns now the longest current hit streak in baseball 21 in a row in a, a dramatic way to extend it yesterday in the ninth with the homer to put the A's on top as Jermaine died back in the lineup till it fit Eric Chavez sixth and then it's Ramon Hernandez Mark Ellis and Adam Pyatt Ray will bat ninth and again against another lefty Chris George goes today for the Royals but very similar to the lefty they faced yesterday in uh, Darrell May the lefty will uh, change speeds he will do a lot of different things but uh, he has to be very fine with his control just because of the inability to throw hard, especially with his fastball. And the first pitch of the game misses outside. He will try to hit that outer corner against the uh, right-handed hitters all day, like he gets a called strike there from Matt Hollowell. And the count is a ball and a strike on Eric Burns. Burns is taking over as an everyday player with the injury to Jermaine Dye in late April. Remember, he started with a little hit streak. He hit an eight in a row right away. Then he had a stretch of four games where he only had two hits, and then he went off on this streak, a 21-gamer. Nomar Garcia Parra lost his 26-gamer on Tuesday, and Kenny Lofton uh, took an 0-for-5 yesterday in St. Louis. 1-2 pitch. Eric Burns will flip it foul. You know, and Eric Burns is very sincere when he said he went in the top of the ninth inning just trying to find a way to get on base or get a run in. He was not thinking about the, the hitting streak. If it meant a walk, getting hit, he'll do anything. He is such an unselfish player, and it's all for real. Mr. Excitement is also Mr. Genuine. As he turns on this one and drives one to left field deep in the corner, 22 in a row for Burns. And back-to-back -back homers on at-bats. <laughs> wow. 
The late game drama yesterday for Eric Burns, and he opens the game today with his second career leadoff home run. One nothing A's. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Fouled a tough pitch. He tried to go inside, made a mistake. Left it out over the middle of the plate. Look where DeFelice goes in and where the ball ends up. Not only in the middle of the plate, but in the seats. And Burnsy just keep doing it. So he gets that out of the way right away now. 22 in the books. Had a bird. That's a nice backhand play by Mendy Lopez. Drops the ball, but recovers. And Chris George there in time. Mendy Lopez, a late addition to the Royal lineup. As initially they had Ken Harvey over at first base, but uh, Ken's mom not doing well. She suffered a stroke a couple of years ago, and she's been in poor health all week. And uh, Ken had to leave the ballpark today, and Mendy Lopez goes right in, Ray, and makes a nice play. He had a great game yesterday. Really helped the Royals uh, take the lead. Stolen base, uh, stolen home. Very exciting player, like Eric Burns. Now here's Miguel Tejada very quietly in the shadow of Eric Burns now 22 game hit streak Miguel has an 11 gamer said all weekend here against the Royals the batting average is up to 226 and one hit to Lopez and he'll take it for the second out of the inning. Let's take a look at the Mercedes keys to the game and uh, well that first one Burns baby Burns he is unbelievable and yes he already is in this game with a leadoff home run to give the A's a one to nothing lead and David A's have played well success here at Kauffman Stadium and against the Royals want to continue that and for Barry Zito don't do what Chris George just did leave a home run ball right in the middle of the plate now don't burn the pasta. <laughs> so Barry Zito right away has the uh, one nothing lead Barry a last uh, dozen runs he has given up to 10 have been on home runs and we'll see how the ball carries today it's much warmer today at least to start the game than it was yesterday at the start of the game it's 75 degrees at first pitch today here in Kansas City Missouri not quite as hot as Mr. Burns Rubio Durazo lost a seven game hit streak yesterday unfortunately we were not able to bring you the game on TV uh, yesterday and Ray and uh, Bill King and Ken Korak I know had fun on radio without a doubt Ray I thought it was the most exciting game yeah. of the year no what doubt. a game as he Reliford bobbles has a great arm but you can't do that very nonchalantly he came over to make that play underestimating uh, Rubio's speed I think and then he bobbled the ball for a rather sloppy air uh, credit to Durazo for running hard forced the issue but you're right I don't think Reliford realized that Durazo can get down the line. Got in front of the ball, but there is very casual. And in a bobbling, and even with a strong arm, could not throw out Durazo. Is that one of those times, Ray, where your, your strength is also your weakness? Yeah. Because he has the, the great arm, he's thinking, I don't have to go so fast, I'll make it up the last 10 feet by just rifling him out. A lot of guys would do it, especially guys on the left side of the infield, short and third, rely too much on their strong arms. That gives Jermaine Dye a chance to pick up his first base set upon his return this weekend in Kansas City, his former home. So Durazo with the air with two outs, now down to second base. And Jermaine Dye, who went 0 for 4 on Friday night, picks up a single. Yesterday, a good day for Jermaine to take off as Tony Pena saw his club lose another heartbreak to the A's last Sunday. Also with Durazo tying the game in the ninth inning, Burnsy winning it the ninth yesterday. And mistakes yesterday on both sides of the field. Hurt the A's, also hurt the Royals. And it, to be honest, it was an ugly game. And uh, fortunate for the A's to win a ball game that uh, they gave up really too many runs where they shouldn't have. To Pena's credit, though, he runs uh, Angel Barroa right out there again after a couple of costly airs. The Kansas City Star, the uh, front page of the sports section, agony of defeat two. As last Sunday, of course, it was Durazo with the game extending home run at the bottom of the ninth. They's down to their last strike, their last out. And again, yesterday, down to their last out, Eric Burns on a 1-0 pitch hits the big three-run homer. You guys didn't have a pair of scissors? You just rip it out? Isn't it? I ripped it out nicely, though. Wasn't oh, that beautiful? No. I almost did it too quickly, but <laughs> that's called art. That's Tommy Edza doing his thing. 0-2 pitch. To Eric Chavez, count is one ball and two strikes. Yeah, we had a shot of Eric Burns on the bench Friday when the A's were down, and and actually Terrence Long pinched hip for him, hit the three-run home run. And I said, "You were upset, weren't you?" And he said, "Yeah, I was." He said, "Because I knew we were going to come back, and I want to be a part of it." They didn't quite come back, but yesterday they did. 
Mike DeFelice behind the plate today as Chavez lifts this one to center field. Carlos Beltran shades down, comes in, and he will make the catch, and that's the inning. What a way to start, though. Eric Burns, number 22, with a home run to open the game, and the A's have a one at nothing lead. And 26 will hit this way. We'll highlight Carlos Beltran at a home run here on Friday night. A good series overall, five for eight. And he's driven in three. This one just over the wall beyond the reach of Jermaine Dye on Friday in the only game the Royals have won on this series. That was the 11-6 game. He's won at 6-1 here Thursday night. And, of course, yesterday in the uh, drama, the 7-6 come from behind win. And now they're up 1-0 as Barry Zito goes to work and against Desi Rutherford. Rutherford starting at second base. He was 2-4 on Thursday night, 1-5 on Friday night. And yesterday came off the bench in a pinch hit roll and picked up a hit. 3-0. and oh, Zito falls behind right away. Three pitches, three fastballs, three out of the strike zone. Make it four. Or rather odd, four-pitch walk for Mr. Zito. Let's check out the ace defense brought to you by McDonald's. Eric Burns now with a 22-game hit streak, but Miguel Tejada has a 21-game airless streak at short, and what a play he made on Ken Harvey in the bottom of the ninth. If that ball gets passed, the game is tied. What a brilliant catch that was. It's a great way to end the game with a great defensive play. Great home run. Terrence Long had a little trouble with the sun in right field. It seems like the sun follows him, whether it's in left or right. Yesterday's game had it all. Wild ups and downs. Joe Randa trying to pick up his bat a little bit, hitting a two and a quarter on the year. That one uh, fought off foul back into the crowd. Barry Zito began the road trip Tuesday night at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Thought he was going to pick up his seventh win of the year. Ray had great stuff. Maybe the best stuff we've seen him have, but gave up a couple of homers. The big one late to Bobby Kelty. And the A's with a heartbreaking loss. Uh, four to three on Tuesday night. And I think we might see a different Barry Zito with regard to pitching a particular game and, and having an idea how he's going to pitch and see the numbers in his last start and the loss to the Twins. But you know, in talking to him after the game and, and about his great curveball that he had, striking out five of the ten, and, and with the plan to pitch to Bobby Kelty and not throw him a curveball. And so I, I think what you see in the future that even if he has a great curveball working and the plan might not call for it, you might see him throw it, and he should. He ends up giving up a home run on a fastball that he tried to throw inside. Joe Randa yanks this one down the line, and he just will hook it around that pole foul. Just missed it. Well, he turned on that one and really hit it hard, but just missed the pole. Low fastball, almost uh, identical to Eric Burns yesterday, only the difference here, Randa out in front because Zito's fastball is about 89, with Dougal's at 96, and Burns, he couldn't get that far in front of him. A curveball, and Randa waves at that one. Beautiful pitch by Zito to pick up his first strikeout of the day. First one of the day, first curveball, and a beautiful one. That's outstanding. You know how hard that is to come out and throw nothing but fastballs, and then all of a sudden drop a, a hook and throw it perfectly. And there is the curveball grip for Barry Zito. Thumb on the seam, and then the, the rotation is just unbelievable. And he throws his a little differently, he says. Most guys usually get the spin from the index finger, but mm -hmm. he gets the spin from the middle finger, huh? Yes. There goes the runner, Rutherford. Pitch up and away. Ramon's throw will bounce. Ellis will block it enough, so no advancement. Desi Rutherford with the quick stolen base into scoring position. Did we show that in slow motion? <laughs> the whole thing took a little while. Yeah, it seemed like. But first move, as runners will do against lefties, and Ramon... Probably realized he didn't have a chance. Good job of Mark Ellis getting his body in front of the ball to keep it on the infield. Seventh stolen base of the year for Relaford. The batter is Mike Sweeney, of course, their tremendous number three hitter. Relaford having a perfect year on steals. 
Zito falls behind him 2 and 0. Oh. Raul Abanez is on deck. He's a left handed batter. The A's will be very careful how they pitch to Sweeney, the Royal captain, who has reached base either by a hit or a walk in 32 in a row, the longest streak currently in baseball. He's got a little hitting streak going now. There's a strike. And Swinney, even though he has the power, he is not strictly a pull hitter. Yesterday in the ninth inning, going to right field with a base hit, unhittable curveball that he takes for strike one. Actually, that was uh, happy he picked up just a base hit. Yeah. I thought it was all set up for him to do something big against Keith Folk, but he singled to right to keep it alive. It's this one to right again, a base hit. Rutherford was going back towards second to make sure the ball got through so he won't score on that. He goes to third. Sweeney make it 33 straight games either by a hit or a walk as he singles. Well, the one thing it does, it by keeping the runner at third sets up a double play. Berzito, although he says admits he's not a ground ball pitcher, gets one on the ground, can get out of the inning, but the infield kind of bunching Sweeney towards the middle. And I think you have to play him a little bit more to hit the opposite field if you go to pitch him away. Well, the A's get one for Barry in the top on the leadoff homer by Burns, but the Royals are threatening with Rutherford at third and Sweeney at first. The batter is Raul Abanez, who ducks at the first one. Abanez was not in Tony Pena's lineup yesterday against Ted Lilly, but he is in today. It's this one to left field, pretty well struck in the corner. Pyatt way back, warning track. He can't get it. It's past him. Rutherford scores. They're going to wave Sweeney in. He will score. To third goes Abanez. And the Royals have the lead at 2-1. to one. Pyatt never quite got back on the wall to make the catch. It goes with a two-run triple for Abanez. Like Sweeney, Abanez going opposite field on pitches away from him, and Adam just drifted with the ball. He didn't go to where he thought the ball was going to be coming down, and as a result, approached the wall, came up short. Catchable ball. He just did not get to it. The batter is Carlos Beltran and over third base Abanez. Ken Baca interestingly here lines the uh, the defense. The right side of the infield is in and the left side Tejada is deep at short. And the theory being here if Beltran goes the other way he's probably not going to hit it all that sharply that they could make a play on the right side. But if he does hit it to the left side it's going to be a pretty well uh, struck ball. One one pitch. Beltron fouls it straight back. So a little like Tim Hudson start here on Friday night. Not quite as dramatic. The A's got two for Huddy in the uh, top of the first on Friday. And the Wells came back with three in the bottom, Ray. But get the early homer by Burns to take the one nothing lead. And the Royals come right back with a two spot. I think Ramon got hit with a follow, follow through by Beltron shaking his left arm. One two pitch big curveball tapped by Beltron coming down the line to score and no play is a Banez ball got past Zito. It's an infield hit for Beltron. He picks up the RBI is 23rd of the year and the Royals lead three to one. Well, he's looking for a strikeout but left the curve up and I think he looked up thinking that Xavi was going to be there to take it. It's going to be tough for Zito or Chavez to throw out the speedy Beltran. Well, Zito throws a nasty curveball and Beltran just tops it but dribbles it down the line enough to not only bring in the run but also reach base himself. There's some bad events for Zito here in the inning. And the Royal strike for three. Here's Mendy Lopez who had a big game yesterday with a couple of hits also stole home yes indeed he came the sixth royal in history to have a straight steal of home not part of a double steal Beltron was the runner at first base but Lily threw to first and at that very moment Lopez 
And the instruction of third base coach John Miserock Foss took off. Yeah. 1 0 pitch. Zito trying to nick the outer corner, misses and falls behind. Foul off. Two and one to Mendy Lopez. I'm surprised the play that Lopez pulled off yesterday is not used more, especially with lefties. Such an easy play because even if you think about it as a pitcher, you see the runner get off a little bit too far at first, you, you instinctively you're going to say, well, I'm going to pick him off. And it's just good timing once the thrower, the pitcher does throw to first, the guy can just walk down the line. Although Hatterberg made, made a great play, and I, I think the block of home plate by Hernandez would have possibly gotten Lopez's play. Mm, nice pitch there, Lopez out in front, and it's two and two, and all the uh, elements were there. Brent Maine was the batter. He's been struggling since uh, coming back from uh, the flu bug that had him missing three games in a row. Maine later in the game with a terrific block on Scott Hatterberg to get it out at the plate. Two and two now on Mendy Lopez. Ramon moves in. Runner takes off. Pitch up. Ramon's throw bounces again. Beltron steals. <laughs> Second stolen base of the inning for the Royals. Rutherford picked up his seventh, and now Beltron is ninth. Actually, Ramon had a much better chance. You could see that the jump was not as good for some reason. The strength in Ramon's arm was not there. The first one, when he tried to rush, it's understandable, but... Uh, this would look like he had a better chance. Beltron, a uh, little right hand problem there as he went in. Does not use the sliding gloves. This one's popped up by Mendy Lopez in the infield. Mark Ellis under it at second base makes the catch for the second out. Carlos Beltron, nine out of ten this year on steals. Coming into this year, 87% he is successful trying to steal bases. That is the best among all active players in baseball. Batter now is Michael Tucker, who's had a pretty good weekend against the A's. Drove in five runs here on Friday night in their big win and tied a career best. Talked about the uh, block of Brent Maine. It was a throw from Michael Tucker in right field yesterday. The gun down Scott Hatterberg at the plate. Going back to the uh, spring, there was talk about making Michael Tucker a second baseman. Right here's the big game he had on Friday night: the homer off of a Tim Hudson, a three-run shot. Well, the similarities you're talking about with Hardy and Zeno today, and both leaving the pitches out in the zone. That's the one he had later in the game. The big two run that doubled after the A's had made it a nine to six game. That double in the eighth made it 11 to six. So five RBIs for Tucker. Tying a career best that last achieved April of 97 when he was a member of the Braves over in the National League. A lot of pitches here for Barry Zito. Count is three and one. Zito is going to throw his 30th pitch of the inning coming up. Not a very good ratio. And what Barry's done in this inning, unfortunately for him, he's, he's gotten the Royals hitters to where they can think fastball. And so far, I've not seen many if any change up from Barry just uh, one or two curveballs and mostly fastballs. Here's a curveball and Tucker lifts one to left. Pyatt came in now gets back and he is under it to make the catch 31 pitch laborious bottom of the first for Zito. The Royals get three and lead three to one after one. Start for Barry Zito's work day giving up three and the ace down three to one. Uh, when you're next at work during the afternoon on a Thursday, we got a special deal we want to tell you about. The Ramon Hernandez going to uh, lead off here, takes a strike from Chris George. 
Ramon, then Mark Ellis and Adam Pyatt in the A's lineup today. Count is one and two on Ramon Hernandez. Ramon, a big base hit in the ninth inning. Or not in the ninth inning, but late in the game that uh, looked like it was going to be able to tie the game. That was the play where Hatterberg was tossed out actually in the eighth inning against Sean Lowe yesterday. And he's seeing lefty Chris George for the first ever time. He's five and four with a 6-3-90 ERA for the Royals. Actually began the year at AAA Omaha where he was 0-4 with an ERA of 560 at AAA that they called him up. He's up with that pitch and the count is two and two. Be interesting to see how Matt Hollowell, the home plate umpire, deals with both Zeno and George, the lefties. And it'll be taken out of the air. Line drive shot right to Desi Relaford for the first out here at the top of the second. As we were saying, uh, next time you're at work during the afternoon of the Thursday, deke out early. These are having a new business person special. Field level seats are half price with a gold bronze proof of purchase. The next business person special will be on June the 12th when the A's take on the Atlanta Braves. For details, get to uh, the nearest long drugs. Mark Ellis against Chris George. Former Royal Paul Bird is a member of the Atlanta Braves, but has not pitched with them all year. And it looks like the A's will not be seeing him. He's not going to be back until late June. He had five bone chips and a bone spur removed from his elbow back in uh, April. He was the Royal All-Star last year, along with Mike Sweeney, and 17-game uh, winner. Start of the game, which the A's won their 20th consecutive. Blown out early in the game. Of course, the Royals did come back. One-two pitch. Pitch about Matt Hollowell, the home plate umpire. We have talked about the the east and west pitches not being called uh, side to side but up and down yes but uh, if he gives George the outside part of the plate or off the plate that could help him tremendously George does not overpower you with his fastball if he has to come to the middle of the plate it can get hurt more Matt Hollowell is a vacation fill in triple uh, A umpire oh, Mark Ellis chasing one there and he strikes out Mark took it over for four yesterday and he strikes out his first at bat today two away. Pitch was supposed to be in and just jumped in a pit. He knew he swung at ball three. Looked like he was trying to protect against the fastball and the last instance saw the break of the ball and just wanted to try to foul it off. Now Adam Pyatt who was in there today against the lefty but hitting at ninth. These are seeing more and more lefties. So Pyatt is getting some uh, starts consecutively. The first 24 games of the year, the A's just saw two lefties. Jamie Moyer and Jared Washburn. They are seeing their 13th left-hander in Chris George today, Ray, over the last 31 games. And they've seen some pretty good lefties. C.C. Sabathia a couple of times. Mark Burley a couple of times. David Wells, Andy Pettit, Kenny Rogers twice. Daryl May, who was pretty good again yesterday. They mm -hmm. have seen him twice. Now seeing uh, young Chris George for the first ever time. By it the other way, and that'll drop down for a base hit in the corner. Michael Tucker will pick it up, but Fiat's on his way to second base. Picks up Wash and then stops. As Tucker a little slow to get it off the wall. But with two outs, Pyatt will stop at second base with a double. And that'll keep it alive for the hottest hitter in baseball right now, Eric Burns, who opened the game. No late drag game drama today to extend the hit streak force right away. Number 22 was extended. Well, as it did yesterday, I don't know if McDougal was trying to intentionally pitch him in yesterday or just throw on a good fastball, but lefty today tried to and missed. And Eric. Burns is finally getting respect because the fans are booing him. <laughs> and that's sign of respect in a visiting park when they boo you because they know you're good. And 
And Fayette gives them an at-bat here in the second. A's are down three to one. And so much has made Eric Burns' enthusiasm and the way he plays the game as well as it should. But uh, he's a very smart baseball player. Ran into him yesterday, Ray, walking around the plaza here in downtown Kansas City. And he, he was saying that he visualized the ninth inning at-bat against McDougal before it even happened. He had a feeling he'd get that fastball and uh, he hit a home run. It turned the whole game around on it. Flies out lazily to right this time. But Tucker in the A strand fired at second at the end of one and a half. 3-1 Kansas City. First pitch here at the bottom of the second. A fastball he throws right past Angel Barroa. Zito gave up three in the bottom of the first. Two on a uh, triple by Raul Abanez that escapes the reach of Adam Pyatt off the left field wall. Barroa goes down and flips one to right center. Burns coming over and will make the catch for the first out. Somewhat surprising whenever Zito gives up runs, Ray, but especially against these hitters. Barry is 2-0 and with an ERA of 2.18 and five career starts against the Royals. Beat him last year a couple of times and really nobody in their lineup hits him. But if you look at the pitches that he's given up hits on today, they've been up. And it really doesn't matter. If, he, if he's got his good stuff, the numbers are going to remain the same. But mistakes happen, and hitters, good hitters, hit mistakes. Up there against Mike DeFelice today. DeFelice, the right-handed hitting uh, catcher they have. The lefty Brent May not in there. There's a strike to DeFelice. Places the fastball beautifully there and gets his called strike two. Here he works from the far, far third base side of the rubber. I think I was interested to see how pitcher comes back the next inning after that's such a great inning and of course. Rick Peterson, the A's pitching coach, talking to Barry between innings and just see what kind of adjustments he makes coming out of this inning. So far, good. As Rick Peterson obviously saw something that Barry was doing, caused him to get the ball up. Threw a change up there, didn't throw too many change ups in the first inning. Such a great pitch for him, especially in his last start when all three pitches were working. That'd be the curveball, wouldn't it? And there it is. Perry's curveball Tuesday night in Minneapolis, Ray, was just outstanding. As you noted, he had 10 strikeouts in total, five on the curveball, mm -hmm. but he threw it harder than he, he typically throws it. After a shake, he's got one he likes. 2-2 two -two to DeFelice. And there was a fastball, low fastball that DeFelice fouls out of play. See the difference in the hitter and how he reacts to the pitch down around the knees versus up belt high. Again, if Barry threw 95, the bell tie or even letter high fastball would work, but to get in the 88, 89 mile per hour range, it's not going to work. And he blows one by him there with a high fastball up and in. And Zito looks sharp now. The first two outs recorded here in the second. He strikes out D. Felice. And this is good location. Got it in, got it up, and D. Felice swung right through it. No chance for that one to come back in the middle of the plate. That'll bring on the leadoff man, Desi Rutherford, who walked to open the game on four pitches and stole second base and scored on the Abanez triple. Uh, Breeze picked up yesterday and the same today, and just looking at the flags, the ball that Ibanez hit the left field, no doubt aided by the wind and taken away from Adam Pipe. Relaford down the line in right field. Ball's going to go foul, though. Those are things that outfielders, infielders have to look at just to see what the elements are for the day. Sometimes pick up some grass, just see the way the wind is blowing. Another cloudy day here in Kansas City. It was sweltering hot here on Friday. 
And it cooled off dramatically yesterday. It was very cool when the game started yesterday. It didn't warm up until the eighth inning, right around the time the ace came alive. A little warmer today, but not sunny. Pretty good hitting weather, though, as far as uh, cloudy. No glare from the sun. There's the pitch we're talking about. Just on the outside. The pitch is not being called a lot by the umpires. Ramon hardly moves his glove. And Hollowell is set up right over. Now well, that's frustrating for Zito and Ramon. That should be able to help the ace hitters out. This ball's pooched to shallow right. Shades down as Ellis makes the back pedaling catch into shallow right to make it. And the ace get out of the second with a 1-2-3 at the end of two. It is still 3-1 KC. He's down three to one as they are wrapping up what has turned out to be a, a rather tumultuous weekend here in uh, Kansas City. All the talk in the uh, papers this week that you've been reading uh, back home. Directly or indirectly uh, involved the A's making a move last night. I don't know if you caught this but the A's have relieved uh, Thad Bosley of his duties as the A's hitting instructor. Effective immediately he was not with the club yesterday for the uh, big comeback win. And Dave Hudgens, who is uh, currently the ace assistant director of player development and the ace former hitting coach, is going to join the club in uh, Florida. He was with the A's in 99. Mock knows him well from their time there. Hatterberg pops this one to Randa. Randa right on the line will make the catch and technically foul ground for the first half. But Hudge will uh, not get to uh, Miami until tomorrow, I guess. So Brad Fisher is picking yeah. up some of the duties, Ray, but obviously. Uh, Thad Bosley, a guy we all grew very close to the last uh, few years, an unfortunate situation. Yeah, and I know Miguel Tejada in some of the Bay Area papers talking about how much Boz had helped him, and and I, I think to the point of, of teaching him the two-strike hitting and the approach going to the opposite field, and Boz did an excellent job with a lot of the hitters. And it's unfortunate, but we wish him the best. Uh, he did a very good job, as Ken Marcus said, go to the playoffs the last three years. He contributed a lot to this club. The appeal, no swing, says the first base umpire Bill Hahn. Count as a ball and a strike on Miguel. And Mock said this morning uh, uh, the decision to relieve that of his duties, not performance related. Yeah, obviously, you read some of the stories, starting with a Tribune story midweek and uh, a Chronicle story later in the week. And I think some things were said that were. Impossible to go back the other way. Billy Bean's quote for the best of the organization. We thought it was time to go in a different direction. We would like to thank Thad for his contributions for the past five years and wish him all the best in his future endeavors. The A's are not going to reassign him as far as I understand. That's a walk. Miguel Tejada gets the walk on a 3-1 pitch. That's a good pitch not to swing at. We talked about the outside part of the plate that George has to rely on to be successful. And unlike uh, Mark Ellis, who swung the pitch away from him, Miguel took the fastball away and a one out walk to start the inning. Here's a Rubio Durazo. He reached on the air by the second baseman, Desi Relaford, his first at bat. It's obviously somewhat of a, a difficult time for this to occur Ray because Billy in the uh, front office very much uh, spending almost all their hours getting ready for the amateur draft which begins on Tuesday. It's a huge process that they have to prepare for. Mm -hmm. So it was somewhat of a distraction not just for the club here on the road but also for Billy in the front office. Durazo a ground ball past the dive of Lopez and also past Tejada. He will motor on to third base after avoiding the ground ball. So the A's with a walk and a single by Ruby have the corners occupied against Chris George just one out and Jermaine die coming up. Well no doubt the pitching of George went strictly against the pitch was inside and you won't see in that picture where uh, Tucker was playing but over in right center they expect Durazo to go right center to left field and so Tucker had a long run to get to the ball and of course the grass high in the outfield to slow it down but fastball inside will be able to pull it and to go against the defense. 
And the grass here in the outfield, as long as I can ever remember it here, and you really have to be careful. The ball will snake a lot on the outfielder. It will not roll directly at you because of the length. It'll slide around a little bit. Jermaine Dye jumps on the first one, drives it to right center. Beltron back, tagging it third, and scoring will be Tejada. So Jermaine Dye picks up his first ribby upon his return. And the A's cut the deficit to 3-2. to two. Durazo holds his ground at first. Jermaine picks up his seventh RBI in total on the season. Good swing by Jermaine after a first at bat base hit. Used the big part of the field. And he hit it very deep to center field. So a good base running by Tejada to get to third where a sack fly would score. Eric Chavez backs out of the way of a Chris George fastball. So Miguel, a leadoff walk. Good base running to avoid the ground ball by Durazo and still make it to third on Tucker. And then scores on Dye's sack fly. Chavez grounds one sharply foul. Eric Chavez not in the lineup yesterday as the A's are seeing back-to-back left-handers. He was not in against... Daryl May, Frank Minichino made the start. Minichino hit a long, long home run deep into the A's bullpen. It was measured at 427 feet. Javi hitting sixth today. Just recently put in the fifth hole, now down to sixth against the left-hander with die back. Waiting, waiting, waiting for the appeal decision from Tim Timmons. No swing, two and two. Chavez fly to center. His first time up against Chris George. He hammers one to right field here. A deep, deep drive, and Chavez against the left-hander hits a two-run homer. The A's are back on top at four to three. Eric Burns homer to open the game, and Eric Chavez hits his tenth of the season here, Ray. Only his third against a left-hander. No doubt has the power, and George, as he did with Eric Burns, left to pitch up a hanging breaking ball to Chavez. And Eric did not miss it. Mm, George gets that call on the outside edge. Here's the home run. Look where it's supposed to be, and it left it middle of the plate in. Slider did not get to Mike DeFelice. And Wow. Way out of here. Yeah. It's 3.30 down the lines here. Ramon grounds one of the shortstop. Barreau has 15 airs on the year, but he'll make that play to conclude the inning. The A's score three in the third and have reclaimed the lead. Eric Chavez brings in the last two with this home run. Four, three A's after two and a half. Those three in the first with three in the third. The last two off the bat of Eric Chavez's 10th homer of the year. So Barry Zito has the lead back. Only has six hits against left-handed pitching all year, but three have gone the distance. Well, Zito back on top by a run. We'll face Joe Random, Mike Sweeney, and Raul Ibanez. Ground ball right to Miguel. And to Hatterberg and Randa retired, one away. Zito in a nice roll now after giving up the little... Uh, Dribbler down the third base line for Beltron's hit. Ray, he has uh, gotten a little hot now, retiring six in a row. Kind of like Dave Stewart. Always a rough have first inning. First, yep. Settle down, and of course, Barry's so good at figuring out what he's doing incorrectly, and just did not seem like he was in the in the good groove in the first inning, leaving the ball up. A lot of the greats, including Mr. Stewart, for whatever reason, uh, if they if they would struggle in a start, it would be right away. They mm -hmm. just could not lock in to start. But as they say, if you don't get the good ones right away, you may not get them. Here's a great matchup. Barry Zito, Cy Young Award winner against the three-time All-Star Mike Sweeney. Barry keeps it away and falls behind 2-0. Oh. 
So when he does his deep knee bend as he gets in the box. And then lifts one to center field. And that will drop in for another hit. This guy's a hit machine. Not only reaching base every single game, but he gets hit after hit. He's two for two again today. Now I feel his flame a little bit deeper because of his power and as a result gets jammed and drops one in front of Eric Burns and Burns a good job not trying to make the spectacular play keeps the double play in order. Here's Raul Abanez now with a fly ball to left that Adam Pye tracked into the corner but the ball just carried on him all the way to the wall and that was the, uh, the most damaging of the Royal hits. Although Zeno struggled in the first throwing 31 pitches in total he probably deserved a better fate is that brought in a couple of runs and then Beltron and then just a dribbler off a curveball brought in the third run. Zito falls behind three and oh now. Royals have adopted the ace philosophy of trying to be more patient. There's a strike. I think most of baseball is trying to adopt this uh, philosophy. The A's and Yankees also have been doing for years and years. So that means the games will be quickened because pitchers will start throwing a lot of first pitch strikes and move around long. Is that why it's quicker now? Yeah. Well, the scouts would say there's not as much offense. Actually, the numbers are just about the same in runs, home runs, just about a little bit down. I think a tick down from last year. But the games are about seven minutes shorter. Actually sat with a lot of the scouts yesterday, Foss, behind mm -hmm. the plate. Your buddy Gordon Lakey was here. Yeah, he told me you sat down there and bothered him the whole game, couldn't uh -oh. do his work. <laughs> it wasn't me, it was that blonde behind us. Ball popped up to Burns in the center. And he makes the catch as the ball drifted on him for the second out here of the third. The center fielder. Rusty Wallace is a former Winston Cup champion, one of NASCAR's greats. Beyond the Glory takes you inside the hidden world of sports' biggest stars. Rusty Wallace, Beyond the Glory, tonight at 8, right here on Fox Sports Net. Here's Beltron now. Zito misses away. Son trying to break out after all. Beltron hit that curveball that is dribbled down the third base line. And he picked up the infield single and an RBI scoring Sweeney. Or actually, Abanez from third. Takes this one to left. Base hit. Well, Beltron is two for two. Sweeney is also two for two. Advances to second base with two outs. Well, it seems like if you can just keep Sweeney and Beltron in the park, take your chances with the rest, with the rest of the lineup. Of course, Abanez swinging the bat well, but in three, four, five. Sweeney, Bel uh, Sweeney Ibanez and Beltran swinging the bat well and it's a good hitting lineup the Royals have and they're young pitching they can keep them together they have a bright future and this guy's swinging the bat pretty well Mendy Lopez had a couple of hits yesterday Royals already have five hits today yesterday in the loss they had 10 in the win on Friday night they banged out 14 and Thursday night they scored only a run but they also had nine hits in that game. Mandy Lopez popped out to second his first time tonight or today it would be and there's a ball count as a ball and a strike. Blocked by Ramon count is two and one no advancement from Sweeney. in Lopez chopper up the middle to Hata there he'll go to first and throw out Lopez to wrap up the inning couple of hits do Zito no damage in the third at the end of three four three here comes Burns 
Rick Popper, Ray Fossey back with you on this now technically back in the Bay Area Sunday afternoon. And he's leading four to three as we start the fourth. First pitch strike there from Chris George to Mark Ellis. Ellis hitting eight today. Struck out his first time up. Adam Pyatt on deck and then Eric Burns. And he's getting a look at lefty Chris George for the first ever time. 23 year old. It was a sandwich pick as they call it in baseball a uh, compensation pick just after the first round back in 98 the Royals got him for the loss of Jay Bell when he signed on with the Diamondbacks. He was a high school pitcher on a Klein High School in 1998. Now this pops this one of the shortstop on Hell Baroa waves everybody away and makes the catch. One away here in the A's fourth. Here on Fox Sports Net, that means it's time to bring out our ducky. And our Aflac trivia question, Mendy Lopez with a uh, straight steal of home yesterday. Straight steal, but uh, overall steals, though, just we'll, we'll count double steals and everything. He is the fourth Royal to steal home against the A's. We'd like the other three to be named. That's a hard one. Against the A's. Against the A's. A's. Well, but it's the Kansas City Royals. That's true, too. So, yeah. Well, you're taken out of that. That's right. Randa, can he make this play on Pyatt? Yes, he did. With help from Mendy. What a play by Randa. Struggling offensively after a quick start, but not defensively. And what's remarkable, he's looking back because he slipped on the turf, on the, on the ground, as he caught the ball. Watch this. Right there is where he slipped with his left foot, yet kept his balance. And a tremendous play by Lopez because the bounce was a short one at first. Not one that uh, Randy maybe could have taken a longer bounce to help his first baseman, but he stretched and, and made a great play. Well, he's having a great year defensively. He has not made an error all year. Good play on the other end. That's what you hope for if you're making a short hop. Of course, the ground, the uh, official score would have given him a base hit anyway. It's a very good official score here in Kansas City. And I thought he made a right right call on Burns' ball. Yeah. As Burns, he, of course, he kept the hit streak alive with a dramatic ninth inning homer, but he reached base in the sixth yesterday on a ground ball to the shortstop, Baroa. And Baroa bobbled it a couple of times. Burns' speed, he beat it, Ray. But do you agree with that call here on the shortstop? Yeah, because he had to go to his left just for a step or two. So he, he was in front of it, should have handled it. Interesting, Kenny Lofton had a similar play against the Pirates yesterday. Or, I mean, against St. Louis, uh, playing for the Pirates. Ground ball to the shortstop, bobbled it, and he's given an air. Hearn strikes out in a fastball there by Chris George that surprised him. <laughs> Time up. We'll come back, back and answer our halfback question. He's up 4-3. Welcome back to Kansas City. You've had long enough to uh, chew on your ah, no, really. trivia question. A quick inning. Are you going to get this one? No. John Mayberry? No way. John Mayberry, obviously part of a double steal, the big first baseman. Craig Paquette, Pokey, the former A, and John Nunnally actually stole home four times in 1995. All of those were part of a double steal. There's a runner at first, runner at third, runner at first takes off, and it's a double steal. But yesterday, Mendy Lopez did it as a straight steal, even though Michael Tucker was on at first base. John Mayberry, I want to see the footage of that. <laughs> Can you believe that one? Put him in a race with Ken Harvey. <laughs> John Mayberry, the first big home run hitter they ever had here in Kansas City. Backhand, tough play. Tucker runs well. Tahada's going to make it, though. What a great play by Tejada. At first, you thought he's got to catch that ball, otherwise he won't be able to make the play. A backhand, the ball actually was bobbled, and he still got enough on the off-balance throw. And watch as he bobbles. Watch what he does right here. He gets over the top and knows he has to get a lot extra on the throw, and Hatterberg stretching on the other end. Great play by Tejada. Yesterday, an even better play to Rob Harvey on the base hit, which would at least tie the game. That's your Carl's Jr. in your face, Michael Tucker, right here and now. Look at this play. But to get the strength to go over the top, think of Garcia Parr, the way he slings the ball from the side, but uh, Tejada right over the top accurately. Get in the fast runner. 
using those choppy steps to try to slow his momentum down. And that was a 3-0 pitch, keep in mind. Tucker mm -hmm. swung at a 3-0 pitch and winds up getting robbed. He broke his bat on it, too. <laughs> so it wasn't that great of a swing. Angel Barroa lifts one to left field. Adam Pyatt. Not going to go back on the ball. He's getting fooled by the wind here. He came in and wound up going way back in the corner to make the catch two way. Pick up some grass, <laughs> throw it in the air, and you can see which way the wind is blowing. You can tell. You're talking to me or to Adam <laughs> Pyatt? <laughs> well, it threw you. All right. Adam, <laughs> look at those big white pennants up there. See? Breaks in and then has to go back quite a distance. At least he caught it. That's the key. Mike DeFelice, Tejada's going to catch this one going out of the shallow left. A quick one, two, three, nine pitch hitting for Barry Zito. We played four, four, three A's. And just went yard out at the Little K here at Kauffman Stadium. And don't miss your chance, Little Leaguers, to come on out to the net on Sunday, June the 15th. Happens to be Father's Day. Get a hot dog, a bag of chips, a drink, and a game ticket for as little as 10 bucks to watch the A's take on Vladimir Guerrero and the Montreal Expos. Here's Scott Hatterberg taking a breaking ball strike from Chris George. Up and in count as a ball and a strike on uh, Scott who was 0 for 2 today with a ground out to first and a foul out to third. Hatterberg 7 for his last 21 though after that tough 0 for 12 stretch lifts this one to left Raul Abanez there. One out. To lefties, Chris George drops down just enough yet to concentrate on keeping the front shoulder in, and Hatterberg did. Got the ball down where he could not drive it so much to the opposite field. You know, much merrier month of May for Miguel after his April struggles at 295 in May. Tejada enters June with a batting average of 226, which may not sound a lot to you, but if the guy was at 161, and even a few days before the end of April, I think he was at 157. At 226, he brings into play tonight, the highest, or today, uh, the highest since the second game of the year. Well, he's making some progress. Tejada straight back, and the count is one ball and two strikes. If you look at the hits of late, which has helped him get his average up, there have been hits that Going to the opposite field, pitches away from him. Three-run home run yesterday, away from him. He's had a couple of doubles to right field. Well, he got some carry on that home yes. run. Your your friend Gordon Lakey, the uh, scout of the Phillies, was just amazed. <laughs> that ball carried out of the ballpark mm -hmm. to right field. This one to right field as well. And that is a foul ball, just foul. See how he stayed back on the pitch inside with two strikes protecting and instead of trying to go out and get the balls. And that's why he was striking out so much earlier and swinging at bad pitches because instead of staying back and letting the ball come to him, he was trying to go out and get it. And so he could not recognize the breaking pitch. Here's the home run yesterday, Ray. Look at this. Look where Tucker is. Look where the ball goes. He came in. Ended Ooh. up uh, to the right of the bullpen. Now back to live action. Fly ball to center. Deep. But Beltron's there. He makes everything look so easy out there. He's so smooth. Two away here in the A's fifth inning. And he's going to fly to South Florida after the game. And the first time ever there'll be a pro player stadium in Miami. We'll be with you for the final two games of the series Wednesday and Thursday against the Fish. The A's against the Marlins. They've never said that before. Wednesday and Thursday at 4 on Fox Sports Net, and we'll have the game for you on Action 36, Cable 6, on Tuesday night. History. And you know why this matchup is so compelling, Ray? A's against the Marlins? Why is that? They're the two best in the history of interleague play. The A's have the best record in interleague play's history. They always get hot right around this time of the year and just take off. And the Marlins have the second best record all time in interleague play. So it's an interleague championship. Comparison also, two clubs that run a lot, a lot of stolen bases. Marlins are going to be running as they will continue, I'm sure. So Ramon and 
Adam Melhus, who might be catching Tuesday in the first game of the series. Have to be ready for the Marlins and their speed. Is he really? Brad Penny is going to pitch. The A's will see Brad Penny, Mark Redman, who we know from his uh, Tigers in, uh, before that Twins days, and Dontrell Willis, who I'm very anxious to see. Have you seen this guy? I saw him on the highlights Put last night hitting a home run. Got a little Vita Blue in him, yes, he? he does. Well, he wides it all up from the left side, and he hit his uh, home run. Also, uh, they won three to two in uh, Miami over Cincinnati yesterday, Ray. Uh, he is from the Bay Area. Yeah. He's from Oakland, went to Encinal High School in Alameda. It should be interesting uh, through June, pitchers in the National League had 14 home runs already this year. And of course, they will have the advantage over the American League teams in interleague play in National League parks. Now, hold on a minute. Mulder's going to pitch Tuesday, though. Yeah, but he hasn't picked up a bat until, what, a week ago? Rubio Durazo grounds one big hop for Mendy Lopez, and that's a one, two, three fifth for Chris George. We're halfway through it in Kansas City. A's four, Royals three. Got to pick up a bag before we head off to Florida. Four, three, the A's lead. Barry Zito will come to work here in the bottom of the fifth. Desi Rutherford will lead it off. And he fouls one back. And we're talking about the ace swing of the bats in uh, South Florida Reds. That's what's on tap today. Brian and Brentwood. What's on tap at Fox Sports Net? Set the email question. What are the athletics doing to prepare for interleague play? Here's a big curveball whack foul. Preparing not to get hurt for the pitcher swinging the bats, not to get hurt. Barry Zito's going to work Friday at the vet in Philadelphia. He was getting ready. The A's uh, had their early extra BP earlier on this series, and Barry Zito was out. Taking some swings. That's the night Mulder started, so Mulder did not get in the uh, in the cage on Thursday. Pitch up and away from Barry, and the count is two and two. Ken Marcus said when he was asked about Barry's in the uh, cage the other day, said, not so good. <laughs> He's a much better pitcher, folks. But judge for yourself. Let's see. A couple of fun attempts coming up and a few swings. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad, Ray, huh? Yeah, he knows Bring what's coming. He knows what's coming, and that's Brad Fisher throwing him about 60. <laughs> Well, the, the good news is that Mulder is going to uh, pitch in uh, Florida. The National League East, uh, boy, they're playing well. Florida playing a lot better. Philadelphia now over 500. They got great pitching in that Ooh. division. What a great changeup there by Zito. And he strikes out Desi Rutherford for the first out here, the fifth. Barry beginning to lock in after giving up those three right away. And this is a pitch that hitter, there's no doubt. Rutherford was fast. Oh, changeup. And this. No chance. Everything looked just like the circle change up or the fastball. Instead, it's the great a circle change up with a great release point from Barry. The most underrated pitch in baseball. Everybody talks about his curveball. That change up sets everything up. First one away to Joe Randa. Randa 0 for 2 this afternoon. All hit foul by Randa. But the A's pitchers, uh, instead of swinging the bat, they'll be thinking about the Braves who they'll see at the Coliseum. They're 55 home runs in the month of uh, May that they hit. This is a pitching ball club. Great pitching, but their offense this year is the biggest difference. Yeah, they haven't missed uh, Tom Glavin or Kevin Millwood all that much. And it's beginning to look like the first game of that series, Tim Hudson will start against Greg Maddox. Will that be fun? We'll all enjoy that. And even Hudson will have to enjoy that. He grew up a fan of the Atlanta Braves, mm -hmm. right? Yes, he is. Of course, you could say that about anybody across the country because uh, America's favorite team whenever they got on television every game. Ball popped up. Eric Chavez will take it. And Joe Randa retired two away. The 
Change up struck out Rutherford and then a fastball in on the hands of Joe Randa for the two strikes. Protecting a little bit and saw a little owie in his expression on his face. The ball may have hit him had he not swung at it. It was in so tight. Well, Mulder's going to pitch Tuesday at Pro Player and then again to hope pitch Sunday in the windup of uh, next week's schedule. He's will uh, be without the the DH of course so although it's strictly happenstance the way Rick Peterson aligned the rotation it turns out to be pretty smart They're obviously the best hitter although Hudson's very good as well but Mulder really swings the bat extremely well and he will go twice on this streak where the A's will play six in a row minus the DH so in Florida Mulder goes Tuesday Hudson at Wednesday Lily Thursday and again for the Marlins Brad Penny Mark Redman and Alameda's Dontrell Willis. Mike Sweeney lifts this one to center field. Burns comes flying in. Ellis out. Ellis will make the catch. And that's a one, two, three for Barry Zito. Barry's now retired seven Royals in a row. At the end of five, four, three A's. But in that three run third with a sacrifice fly. In his first RBI back. And he's back in Kansas City. Jermaine in our Pepsi spotlight. Today he was a Royal from March the 27th of 97 to July the 25th of 2001. He made his only All-Star appearance here as a member of the Royals in 2000. Also won a Gold Glove here. And don't bring up the name Nafi Perez around here, folks. That's the guy they got <laughs> in the three-team uh, deal at the A's, Rockies, and Royals. There's a strike, taking on three and zero. Oh. Uh, Jermaine said after playing his first game on Friday and he said just everything was kind of a whirlwind. But today a lot better taking pitches as he did there for the walk base hit his first at bat and drove the ball well to center field. Here he is as a member of the KC Royals home run. Well hit ball there by J.D. wearing his number 24. Look at that play. He was a, a gold lover here 2001 in right field. was the first Royal elected to the All-Star team that 2000 year. He was elected first Royal since Bo. Since Bo Jackson. Made it back in the 80s. Eric Chavez reaching out and that's caught. By the shortstop Baroa. As he cued one off the end of the bat. One away. Now George tried to pitch Chavez away his last about this time he was successful as Xavi hit it off the end of the bat and again pitchers make mistakes good hitters take advantage of them. Jermaine gets a pretty nice reaction when he comes back here he's still very well received nothing like Johnny Damon mm -hmm. remember when Johnny came back here as a member of the A's and I just I was shocked at how these very nice people in the Midwest turned on him and they you bring up Johnny Damon's name around here they go nuts Ramon Hernandez hits this one hard but right at the left fielder of Bondi has two outs it wasn't the difference there that Damon had a contract and they turned it down whereas uh, was Jermaine ever offered one to turn down he I, was he was entering the same phase of uh, Johnny Damon's situation in the offseason but never quite got there right. where he was going to be arbitration eligible that they, they traded him midway through that season in July to the A's where the Royals traded Johnny Damon in the offseason they were similar situations but I think maybe also the Damon went first and yeah. die followed but I think he had turned down and they said they were prepared to take it about thirty five million for uh, five years that he had turned down. Johnny Damon struggling with the uh, Boston Red Sox. You see where Grady Little dropped him yeah. to ninth in the batting order yesterday against the lefty. Well, he just wanted to have speed at the bottom of the order. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's hitting about 240. Mm -hmm. Johnny Damon, but Red Sox had the same record the A's had. Playing very well after a slow start. Speaking of records, how about the Tigers winning the same number of games as the Yankees in May? Is that 11, right? 11 games. Is that right? That's how poorly the Yankees played. I couldn't believe it myself when I saw it. 
The Yankees, after getting off to their 23 and 6 start, they almost had the exact same record as the A's. They're only a game uh, better in the win column. They're 32 and 23. Mark Ellis pops one down the line and right, a foul ball, and it will land foul right off the tarp, the John Deere tarp here in Kansas City. Big news with the American League East today is Roger Clemens trying to win his 300th game. He was up big in Detroit, and the lead was trimmed down. Roger tries to become the 21st to win at 300. Yankees, although they've been scuffling and they had the terrible month of May, Ray, they did beat the Red Sox two out of three mm -hmm. in back-to-back -back series, and they, they still maintain that half-game edge on the Bostonians. And the Blue Jays are for real. They're hitting attack. They won 21 games in May. Yes, they did. Their best month yeah. ever, right? They went 21 and 8 in May after a 10 and 18 April. And the Blue Jays right there, Foss, just yep. a couple back. By the way, the Clemens game now, it is 8 6 Yankees in the seventh. Clemens is out of the game. And the lefty Sterling Hitchcock is in for Joe Torrey. Way in tight to Mark Ellis, who has taken the. Uh, at bat full now three and two against Chris George so Jermaine Dye will be on the move off first base. This will be the 97th pitch for Chris George. His last outing was by far the shortest of the year. Didn't go very well at all against Seattle. That's a comebacker, and he's got it by George. Ellis is out, and that's the inning. The leadoff walk to die. We played five and a half, four, three, A's. Bulls Hall of Fame, their great second baseman in the uh, 1970s. Eight-time Gold Glove winning uh, Frank White. Now the uh, special assistant to their general manager here, Alan Baird. And one of only three, along with uh, Mr. Royal, George Brett, of course, and uh, Dick Hauser. Dick Hauser, the underrated manager of the uh, KC Royals. Got them their World Series championship in 1985. Barry Zito against Raul Abanez here jumps ahead a couple of strikes. Dick Hauser managed the Yankees before the Royals. Big curveball. Hauser, remember 1980, won 103 games, mm -hmm. and uh, George Steinbrenner fired and brought in Gene Michael. Ken Maka of the A's is the first manager in baseball since to inherit a 100 win team. The appeal, no swing, says Tim Timmons at third, two and two. And of course, the A's have uh, increased their wins, what, the last five years? Yeah. Keeps the last five years, so. Can you keep it going? Mark, it's 104, buddy. <laughs> it's pretty hot. Tanya strikes out. And there's the first out here of the bottom of the sixth. Uh, Ken Korak is away this weekend. Congratulations to his uh, daughter graduating from eighth grade on to high school. So with Ken away, Bill King needs a partner over on radio. And look who the A's have brought in. Mike McFarland, the former A. He's doing all the talking. Former <laughs> A catcher in 98, 99, working with Bill King. Bill told him before the game, it's your show. Do whatever you want. I think, I think what? Mike's taking that to heart. <laughs> Mike's a terrific broadcaster yeah. now, working with uh, ESPN. I didn't just say that here on Fox. Did I ground ball to third? I apologize, Ted Briggs. No emails. Chavez <laughs> throws out Beltron. I just said a four-letter word. <laughs> no, I? I couldn't believe you said that. <laughs> well, you were just Perfect explaining. Firm. You're just explaining where Mike McFarland's working now. You should always tell the truth, Ray. You just should right. always be telling the truth. <laughs> Chavez with a nice play, throwing out Beltra two away. You got mail. <laughs> Andy Lopez now. Ground ball. Chavez again. Same play. George Brett like. And he throws out Lopez. Eight pitch. One, two, three for Zito. He is rolling. He's retired 10 in a row and leads 4 3 after six. Well, the A's are the only folks in baseball referring to these, what they actually are. They're not Babushkas. They're Russian nesting dolls. And they're going to give them away on Saturday, June the 14th, when the A's 
take on the Montreal Expos 105 first pitch first 10,000 receiving there they are your big three Russian nesting dolls I guess the uh, correct word in Russian is matrishkas but they didn't get a trademark on that but babushka that's a Russian scarf I always thought it meant baby, but apparently it means a grandmother. But in any event, they pick that up, Ray. And they gave away 15,000 George Brett's grandmothers yesterday. <laughs> That's what what a woman. Here. What a woman she is. <laughs> Cloning. DJ Carrasco will take over for the Royals. They make a Nextel direct connect to the bullpen as they go from the lefty starter, Chris George, to the righty out of the bullpen. Uh, DJ, who was given up a few big hits to the A's the last couple of weekends, A's are going to send up a pinch hitter and keep that streak alive. Terrence Long not in the starting lineup for the uh, second time in three games with Jermaine Dye back, but he will come off the bench and uh, keep his consecutive game streak alive as he did on Friday night with this three-run homer to get the A's back into the game at 9-6. to six. So, See how easy the swing was? Just such a great, easy swing, and it all exploded off his back. So it's see long as the streak now up to 454 straight as he pops this one foul. Joe Randa comes over, but way into the crowd for a foul souvenir. The longest pinch hitting for Adam Pyatt. who winds up one for two today with a double. Joining uh, Billy McMillan on the A's bench. And he's have fortified their bench a bit, making some changes here on this road trip, Ray. And uh, you want to have a, a deep bench, certainly. But even more so going into the National League Park where you don't have the DH and those figures if you fall behind there's more pinch hitting involved. And a decision Ken Maki has to make starting Tuesday at the National League Parks as far as uh, Rubio Durazo and Scott Hanover. A couple of guys one playing first one DHing no DH of course. And it'll be based obviously on whatever matchups they have as long strikes out here against DJ Carrasco. Keep in mind, Rubio Durazo has somewhat of a track record against those guys, being a, a four-year member of the Diamondbacks. Breaking ball, good down or out of the strike zone to T. Long, and pitch that he has been susceptible to swing at pitches down and out of the strike zone. I think the turf might have an effect also in Philadelphia. Might uh, keep Scott Hedberg off of the turf a little because of his ankle, but I'm sure they'll each get plenty of time. Well, they have that uh, that field turf, right, mm -hmm. like they have in uh, in Tampa, St. Petersburg. 1-0 pitch to Eric Burns he is fouled back. If you're just joining us today here on Fox Sports Net, Eric Burns wasted no time to extend the streak. He's wearing it right on his jersey. A 22-game hit streak for Burnsy as he opened the game with a leadoff home run. There's a big breaking ball by Carrasco that misses up and the count is two and one. Count is three and one for Burns. Watching some of the game yesterday with Lofton trying to extend his hitting streak and it seemed like every pitch he saw he was swinging at. He didn't take hardly anything. Burns takes a walk here, already having the 22 gamer. So a one out walk, and that'll bring up Scott Hatterberg. who used to catch Roger Clemens Ooh. as a Red Sox. And look at this the Tigers have rallied back against the Yankee bullpen to tie the game, and Roger will have to wait a bit longer now for number 300. On Antonio Asuno is in the game for the Yankees. Yankees had a big lead in that game. It was cut to eight to six. It was seven to one at one point. I want to see the attendance in the game, <clears throat> maybe because of Clemens going for 300, a packed house. It looked like in watching the beginning of the game that maybe the Tigers fans realized that their club can play some baseball and come out and support them. As you noted, they're playing a heck of a lot better after their disastrous start. They, they're 14 and 39. Anderberg fouls one out of play. Yeah, we're two months into the season now, so it's uh, just about exactly a third of the way. Two months out of six are done. Every team has played about 40, 
54 games, 54, 55 games, which is the one third mark in 162. And a lot of the early season surprises now are turning around. The Royals were the talk of baseball. 16 and 3 they were. And now they're only a game over 500. John Halama in his pitching in the bullpen, although Halama is going to make the start, we are told by John himself, in Philadelphia next Saturday. He is available to pitch out of the bullpen today. Count as a ball and two strikes to Scott Hatterberg. And the Royals outfield bunching towards the middle, giving a lot down the left and right field lines. See, Ibanez off the line and left, same for Tucker and right. There goes Burns, and he's got a stolen base without a throw as the ball rolled around on Mike DeFelice for Burns' fourth stolen base of the season. It's a lot to be said about picking the time you're going to run with the pitch, and the type of pitch. And Carrasco threw one of the dirt off-speed pitch, and DeFelice could not handle it. And Bernsey in scoring position with just one out. It's a hitter's count. Hitter might get a fastball, which helps the catcher on a stolen base attempt. Whereas uh, in this case, more of a pitcher's count. Hatterberg pulls one base hit right field. Michael Tucker charges, comes uh, home with the throw, and Burns is out again. Michael Tucker. Michael Tucker threw out Hatterberg at the plate yesterday, and now he gets another in. And much speedier Burns with just one out, but he does try to come around, and he's the second out of the inning at the plate. You know, the thing that hurt Burns, he, it's a line drive. He did not know if the ball was cleanly going to be in right field, so he did not get a great jump. But as a third-base coach, you don't see it. You see where the ball is hit. And Ron Washington, I guarantee you, did not know that Burns, he did not take off as soon as the ball was hit. But a strong throw again by Michael Tucker, right on line to Mike DeFelice. Had the plate blocked. That's how you block the plate. See where his left foot is? Get the corner of the plate, force the runner to go around you, and you can just take the ball and go with the runner and make the tag. Now Tucker gets another runner. He, uh, he comes home quickly. That's the key to him. He charges the ball, comes home firing. Royals have uh, picked up three assists from their outfield on this series. Tucker's got a couple of them. Here's Miguel Tejada now. Hatterberg did advance in the scoring position on the throw home after his single, so he's at second. Tejada takes a breaking ball strike from Carrasco, who got a visit from Tony Pena when we were showing you the various replays on Burns trying to score. Miguel has a hitting streak that needs uh, extending himself. He's walked in three trips, but no hits. Miguel, an 11 game hitting streak, he brings into play today. And during this 11 game streak, he's hitting 325. Great, the biggest difference right now for Scott Hatterberg, there's nobody holding him close. He can get a secondary, maybe even a third lead off second base so that he can break. Ground ball up the middle. There's Baroa. Got to make the throw now. And he does. So the A's will not score as Burns is tossed out at the plate by Michael Tucker. Hatterberg left stranded. And we go to the bottom of the seventh after a stretch. 4 3. Zito and the A's lead in Kansas City. This day of sports show period. They have a pretty good week coming up. 8 and 10 are the start times uh, every weeknight here on Fox Sports Net. The commissioner of the NHL right during the Stanley Cup finals will be dropping by. Mr. Bettman, big win for the Mighty Ducks last night in overtime. One of the most exciting athletes. A great quarterback, the lefty of the Atlanta Falcons, Michael Vick, and the NBA Rookie of the Year, Amari Stoudemire, will also be on the best day in this week. 8 and 10 on Fox Sports Net. Terrence Long will uh, play left field again, a spot he has to reacclimate to as he's uh, going to play more and more left field. After pitch hitting for Adam Pyatt, he takes over in left, turns in center, and Jermaine Dye back in right field. Barry Zito threw 31 in the first and gave up those three runs. He's at 97 now, getting better and better. Did have a 16 pitch fifth, even though it was a 1 2 3. And Barry's had three straight one, two, three innings. He's retired ten in a row 
in total. Alama still working in the bullpen. And the right-hander Chad Bradford also gets up. The submariner out in that left field. The, the bullpen cave out there. Michael Tucker takes a strike. And without the pitch count, Barry Zito could go deeper into this game. He, he is pitching much better now than he was in the early game, especially the first. These are putting Halami in the bullpen to give them a couple of lefties. Ricardo Rincon, of course, is available. And uh, Halama, though, will make the start in Philadelphia next Saturday at the vet, the next time the A's need their quote unquote fifth starter. John had a short outing Wednesday afternoon in Minneapolis. Michael Tucker fouls one back on a 3-1 pitch. The count goes full now. Tucker, Baroa, DeFelice. Lower third in the batting order. Zito has handled uh, each of these three. And he'll get Tucker now for a third time. Hatterberg himself will beat Tucker. One out. Zito's retired 11 in a row. Scott Hatterberg taking the bag himself. And it's something Ron Washington uh, was talking to him about. That any time you can take the, the ball yourself without feeding the ball, that's one less throw that has to be made. Playing deep, but catches the ball and then hustles, even though Tucker, good speed, decides to take it himself. And that's always a better idea. Gets him by a step, but avoids the throw and pitcher having to catch the bag at the same time in some cases. Got deep he's playing. Two strikes on Tucker, no threat, and Zito's there, but peels off, and Atterberg takes himself. Good idea. Berdoa shows Bunt takes a strike. It's helpful to have a, a, a good athlete over at first base. Mm -hmm. Atterberg is, uh, compared to most first basemen around baseball, he's a smaller guy, and he moves around a little quicker, a little better. And he's learned that position. Think about how far he has come since uh, the start of last year. Oh, uh, takes it at the count. Two and one. That one just missed, says the plate up player, Matt Hollowell. Ramon moves away. And Baroa lifts this one. Terrence Long in left. Get a retreat. Wynn get a carry it to the wall. Long will make the catch right against the screen. The chain link fence. That ball got a lot of carry to left field. Boy, you could just feel a gust of wind pick up just as the ball went in the air. And Terrence Long playing right field yesterday lost the ball off Des Desi Relliford's bat in the sun. This one tracked it nicely, found out how close he was, did not need his sunglasses. It's oh, catch the ball. Wow. It really traveled. Mike Felice struck out his first time up and then lined out to short. He is 0 for 2. Brent May not in the lineup today, as we noted. He's been bothered by the flu. He did start yesterday against the lefty Lilly, but not in against uh, his good buddy Barry Zito. They spent part of the offseason this year surfing in a little tiny island off of Fiji. It's Barry Zito, Ryan Plesko, and Brent Main. There's a base hit for De Felice. Well, that'll break it up. Zito had retired a dozen Royals in a row before De Felice rolls a single through with two outs. Ken Maka. It's like he is debating whether to make a move or not. Banners Desi Rutherford, right? Talking to Rick Peterson, just a question lefty or righty. He wants to face Rutherford, which he, or he turns around to bat left or right. Now here comes Rick Peterson, Rutherford, and the stat sheet here he is a, a much, much better hitter against right-handed, uh, or hitting right-handed against left-handed pitching. Over 400 against lefties. So they would go to Bradford if they make the move here, but it looks like Zito's going to stay in the game. 
Don't forget to buy an A's mini plane today and see the Yankees free. How does that work out? See four exciting games, including Mark Mulder bobblehead all day, the August 30th fireworks show, and the August the first game against the Yankees is free. You pick the other five games. Sounds like a deal. OaklandAthletics.com. Get there immediately or call 510-638. Go A's. Now Peterson visits. Zito will face Rutherford on deck is Randa and then Sweeney. Back-to-back right-handers. Now this may be Zito's last batter of the game, no matter how it turns out. Barry threw 116 pitches Tuesday in Minneapolis. He's gotten Desi out twice. Walked him to open the game on four pitches. Ground ball. That'll bounce through. To third goes De Felice. Dog and a gun it that way. Going to have a play. He's safe. He's safe. De Felice got around the tag of Chavez to keep the inning alive. What a strong throw by Jermaine Dye. And no doubt he is back. Swinging the bat well and making a strong throw. Again, Rutherford going against the defense. And De Felice really taking a chance. Quick tag by Eric Chavez. He thought he got him, but Tim Timmons said the foot was in first. Right on line is a throw from Jermaine Dye. The tag, did he get him? Is he too high? I think the foot was on the bag. Shabby tagged him high. And that will be it. Barry Zito will yield to Chad Bradford of the Royals sending up back-to-back right-handers. So he retired 12 in a row, then yields a couple of two-out singles here. Bradford comes in. He's up by a run in the seventh. Barry Zito gives up three runs to the first four hitters he faces today, but no more beyond. He had retired 12 in a row, and then DeFelice a two-out single. Then Desi Rutherford, this base hit to right, and die with a great throw. Almost nails DeFelice, Foss, with a nice slide. Watch the foot. Watch the left foot in as Xavi tagged him on the, around the kneecap. And a good slide by DeFelice, otherwise he is out. And he goes feet first, which probably is the key, because he got to the bag quicker. Zito thinks he got it. He was hoping he got it, but he didn't. Very uh, 31 pitches in the first in those three runs scoring, and that's why he does not get deeper into the game. But he throws a very solid six and two thirds, and now it's up to Chad Bradford and the A's bullpen. Four three A's. Bradford makes his 23rd appearance of the year. Joe Randa, the batter, lurking on deck. Mike Sweeney. Randa takes a strike. Randa really struggling overall. He is uh, 0 for 3 today. And in the depths of a uh, very lengthy slump. Randa, very consistent hitter throughout his career. And he's got a chance to tie the game or put him ahead. De Felice at third. Rutherford at first. And has always been a very consistent run producer. He's had some big RBI years in 2000. He drove in 106 runs for the Royals, and he's had right around 80 the last couple of years. A little off that pace, which is 22 RBIs the first third of the year, and this is a big reason why he's not coming through with two outs and runners in scoring position. Is three hits on the year. 1-1 pitch, up and away. The Frisbee misses, 2-1. Tony Pena probably looking at first and third, thinking if he had Desi Relaford at third and DeFelice at first, he might try to do something, but speed is in the wrong location right now for him. And Bradford knows that Randa is the key guy because Mike Swaining, a very tough hitter in the on-deck circle. He'd rather try to get Randa out here. Randa to right, base hit, ties the game. Zito won't win. And now he's 
hoping that Chad Bradford can get out Mike Sweeney so he can keep it a tie game. Just excellent heading again. Randa and Sweeney did this yesterday. Pitches away, and when you're struggling, the last thing you want to try to do is pull an outside fastball. And Randa went with it perfectly. Rick Peterson, today's pitching coach, comes out of the dugout. You mentioned Randa's base hit against Keith Folt late in the game yesterday, Ray. And base hit to bring in a run. Miranda now beginning to swing the bat a little better the last couple of days, and that's a huge hit. Ricardo Rincon gets up. He's preparing for Raul Abanez and then uh, Carlos Beltran. They are going to follow, though, in the batting order, Mike Sweeney. And here's the most dangerous hitter in all of Kansas City. Three-time All-Star Sweeney. It was two for three today. He is red hot. He has pushed his average up over 300. And all is starting with two outs. Barry Zito, two quick outs. Ground ball to first, five ball to left, and three singles in succession. Sweeney takes a strike. And if had it not been for DeFelice going to third on the base hit, he wouldn't have scored on Brandon's base hit. He always hit too hard to right and with Dye's arm. So his hustle gets him to third, able to score. Lays off the Frisbee outside, and the count is a ball and a strike. Sweeney will take that pitch, uh, outside pitch. He'll slap it to right. He is not really a home run hitter. He hits a lot of home runs or a good enough amount, but he's just a good line drive hitter. Hits the ball where it's pitched. And he is a run producer. Drove in 144 runs in 2000. Second most in the lead. And he fouls this one off. One ball and two strikes. Looked like he was trying to punch the ball to right field right there. Yeah. Inside out the swing. And even though it's very tough for, for Mark Ellis to even consider of shading him more, almost like a left-handed pull hitter. I think in this situation, you try to cheat a little bit. So where Ellis is playing, look at the hole even with Hatterberg off the bag at first. Still very inviting for a right-hander who goes so well that way. Relaford runs very well. Runner at second base. Pitch in now. Sweeney takes it two and two. Now Bradford would like to get Sweeney here on two two and not have to throw him a, a full count pitch where the runners can break. Struck him out. Sweeney misses it, and Bradford gets him on the 2-2 pitch. So Bradford gives up the game tying hit, but strikes out Sweeney. 4-4 after seven. Mr. Ray Fossey, Greg Papa with you in Kansas City, Missouri, the show me state. This guy's checking for himself. As we go to the eighth, it's a tie game now. He's led 1-0 on the Burns leadoff homer. Wells came back with three against Zito in the bottom of the first. Ace came back with three. In the third to go up 4 3 2 on the homer by Chavez. The Royals tie it at the bottom of the seventh. And here is Rick DeHart, who the A's saw the first game of the series, made his first appearance in the major league since 99 when he's a member of the Montreal Expos. He's back and he's going to face a Ruby El Durazo. DeHart was just called up this past week from AAA Omaha. He's the only lefty in the Royal bullpen. So that's why he's in to face Durazo. Die on deck and then Chavez. So we'll face two out of three lefties to start. Lefty Chris George went the first six. Righty DJ Carrasco went the seventh. Now it's DeHart.
Terrazzo to center field. Carlos Beltran racing back. That's going over his head. He plays it well, though. Ruby's got to hustle to second base. He'll make it standing, stumbling a bit, but he gets there. So Durazo opens the eighth with a double to dead center field. Durazo showing tremendous power, and when you see the center fielder turn his back and give up on the ball, you know it's been smoked. Kept the shoulder in, and we just keep saying it because he does such a great job, and Beltran just hoping as the ball comes off the wall that he make a strong throw and get Ruby at second. A good hustle, stand-up double. Wow. Some kind of strength. Mongo. From the movie Blazing Saddles, a few of his teammates have done to Mongo or Ruby. Here's Jermaine Dye, who picked up a sack fly. And Jermaine, a perfect game. A single, a sack fly, and a walk today. Now, in this situation, he'd like, obviously, to move Durazo along over to third base, Ray, but uh, he just wants to swing his big bat. Well, he's not getting pitches to try to hit to the right side. A couple of fastballs missing badly inside. And here comes De Felice. DeHart may be trying too hard to bring the ball in so he can't go the other way that he's uh, out of the strike zone. Well, in the double also for Tony Pena, he's got Grimsley, the right hander in the bullpen, but he also knows that Chavez, the left hander, is in the on deck circle. So it's the beauty of having alternating lefty righties in the lineup. Here to see Jason Grimsley again? Of course. Ty lifts this one to right field. Durazo will tag. Tucker getting lined up, makes the catch. Durazo goes to third, and he makes it. Very good base running. And very, very good hitting. Durazo. <laughs> and it'll bring out Eric Chavez, who uh, picked up a huge two-run homer back in the third to give the A's the lead. It's our Chevy drive of the game. Well, a strong hit from Eric Chavez. George made a mistake, and Chavi just looked. He knew it had the distance. He just wanted to make sure it did not hook too quickly. Eric's 10th homer of the season, his third off a lefty. That was off of Chris George. And yeah, so half of his six hits against lefties this year have been home runs. Infield in now. And Xavi right now would take a hit or a way to get the runner in from third. Probably it'd be a lot happier than even hitting the two run home run, which gave the A's the lead. This also, if he could find a way to get Durazo in, would give the A's the lead. Ball gets away, but not far enough. De Felice checking out Durazo as he picks up the rolling ball. Felice, always known as a very good uh, defensive catcher, has been swinging the bat surprisingly well this first year. As a member of the uh, KC Royals, he was a, a Cardinal down Highway 70 last year, Diamondback before that, and before that a Tampa Bay Devil Ray, and actually uh, came up with the Cardinals. Chavez to second base, Rutherford just throws too well. So Chavez unable to bring in the run. Durazo stays at third, two outs. And now Tony Pena will make the move. He will bring in Jason Everyday Grimsley. At least every day against the A's. So Chavez unable to bring in the go-ahead run. Grimsley will come in to face the right-hander, Ramon Hernandez. A's have the go-ahead run over third base and the person of Durazo. Can they get him in here in the eighth inning? To break this tie is their 4-4 with the Royals. Would you like a necktie, Dad? So we got a way for you to pick it up. Father's Day, June the 15th. Actually, you don't have to be a dad. Just the first 7,500 men to arrive nice and early when the A's take on the Expos coming up uh, June the 15th. They'll take home a necktie, A's necktie, courtesy of Macy's. 510-762 ball or OaklandAthletics.com. The tie one on. Jason Grimsley, we've seen him each game on this series. He was good yesterday. He had a 1, 2, 3, 7. Not so good. The uh, first two games walked a couple on Thursday night and was uh, hit around a little bit on Friday night. Got a couple outs, gave up four hits and two runs. Here's a big at bat Ray for one Ramon Hernandez gets ahead one of those. Well, and just think right field like he did yesterday when he hit what looked like an RBI single to right, but a strong throw by Tucker who once again did it today. 
The outfield assists by the Royals in three games of the first four have been great. He's don't want to waste a leadoff double here. Durazo crunched one to center off the wall to open the inning. The die flies to right. Durazo able to tag and get to third, but then Chavez with the infield in. Bounced out to second. Now they're going to bring in the run with two outs. Ramon gets ahead, though. Two balls and no strikes. Here's one to right field. A base hit, and the A's have the lead back. Durazo comes down to score, and it's five to four A's. Is that Chavez running out to congrat? No, no, he's going to wait till he comes back in the dugout. But, boy, when you're a hitter and you don't get the job done, you're cheering. Come on, Raymond, do it. And great inside out swing, huge hole on the right side, and he does it. Outstanding hitting by Hernandez. Didn't have to worry about the runner scoring from second this time. Well, that's a big, big run for the Oakland A's to reclaim the lead now. Mark Ellis. Hitless again today, struck out, popped out, and had a comebacker. All against the starter, Chris George, gets a look at Grimsley. Grimsley falling behind, and it's 2-0. and oh. Greg, you think about the Ramon Hernandez base hit. It was 2-0 oh count, and a lot of times we've seen Ramon with a 2-0 oh count thinking, I'm going to get a fastball, and I'm going to try to hit the ball hard to left field, try to pull it in the seats. But instead, he takes it to the opposite field. That is just smart hitting. It's so much better for him with a short swing. Grimsley now, 2-0 to Ellis, missing. Crowd beginning to moan and groan a little bit as Grimsley has uh, had some inconsistency this year. And they've got Brad Voiles up in the bullpen. He was just brought up from AAA, like Rick DeHart. On Wednesday, they made uh, six different transactions on Wednesday. Strike on a 3-0 pitch. A lot of rumors that the Yankees are trying to reacquire Jason Grimsley. He was a Yankee in 1999 and 2000 and won a couple of World Series rings with them. There's a walk, though. So he gives up the tie-breaking base hit by Ramon Hernandez, follows it up by walking Mark Ellis. The left fielder, Terrence Long. How many relievers are asked to work four straight days? But Jason Grimsley has appeared in every game on this series through 13 pitches Thursday, 14 Friday, and yesterday afternoon he threw only nine, so the, the pitch totals have been low. Still has to warm up to come in. Yeah, they'd have to factor that in. Yeah. You're right. There's a strike. To Terrence Law. Tony Pena was talking about his closer, Mike McDougal. He said he sent him the winter ball to make sure, since he's going to be a closer, to pitch three days in a row. He said he came back and could pitch four days in a row. So maybe that's the way they build up their arm strength. He's hope that he stays right there today. A big hard throwing right hand. Terrence Long. One ball, one strike. Terrence faced McDougal on Friday night. Got one of those change ups that wound up on the screen. He threw three change-ups on Friday night, and they uh, wound up on the backstop. 1-1 one, one to T. Long. It's in the hole, a base hit again. Coming around, Ramon Hernandez. Tucker will hold the ball. Ramon will score standing. The A strike for two here in the eighth against Jason Grimsley, who was hearing it. And they have a 6-4 to four lead. Ramon, a big base hit, followed by Terrence Long. And that's going to be it now. Tony Pena will make the change. So Jason Grimsley appears all four games this weekend against the A's. Three of the four were not very good outings at all. Tony trying to pick him up, but he is going to make the change as he will bring in Brad Boyles out of the bullpen. The A's have the lead back. Two here in the eighth so far, and they're up 6-4 in KC. He's even without a hitting coach, Ray, or swinging the bats on this series. Eric Burns opens the game with a homer, third career leadoff homer. Hit streak 22. Eric Chavez off the left. He smokes one. 
Give the A's the lead. And after it was tied, the A's come right back here in the eighth. Ramon Hernandez, a big base hit to bring in Ruby. Well, a great opposite field in there. And then T. Long, another two out RBI single. Ramon's base hit. Got it all going here in the inning, though. Check out the Jack in the Box game. So remember, the A's have struck for a half dozen runs again. They scored seven yesterday. They had six, even in losing on Friday night, they scored a half dozen. They scored six on Thursday. And even in losing the finale in Minneapolis on Wednesday, they scored five. So very quietly, yep. the ace uh, bats are beginning to bust out. And you know it was going to happen. And it's... Eric Burns straight up in the silo. Angel Barroa will call for the fair catch and make it right in the middle of the dime. The A's get two. Ramon Hernandez, a two-out knock, and T. Long another. We go to the bottom of the eighth, 6 4 A's. Any given Sunday, not such a, a great film, but a pretty good theme here on A's television. Last three weeks, we brought you some uh, some comebacks. He's down three to one. They're a little mild, but they do score two in the eight to break the tie. Go up six four. First last Sunday, a stunner. And the Sunday before in Cleveland, even more shocking. He's down five nothing. Come back to win at the Jake. Eight to five. This guy's set to go here. He's six outs away. We'll start the bottom of the eighth with a pitching change. Ricardo Rincon will come in. Lefty on lefty as Rico makes his 20th appearance of the year. He'll face Raul Ibanez to start. Switcher and Carlos Beltran and Mindy Lopez schedule. There's a strike. Donny has tripled in the Royals' first two runs. Hit a uh, drive that carried all the way to the wall, avoided the uh, love of Adam Pyatt up against the wall. 90 mile hour fastball, 84 mile hour slider from Brent Cole. Biden is going to try to go to the opposite field as Rincon stand away from him and Hernandez emphasizing get the ball away. Try to get him to chase the slider. Mm, just missed. Matt Hollowell behind the plate. Rincon making his second appearance of the weekend here in Kansas City. Worked on Friday night. Comes in tight, misses. Two and two. Rincon got Ivanez to fly out to right on Friday night, but then uh, later on gave up the big double to Michael Tucker as they added a couple of runs. 9 6 game became 11 to 6. Ivanez fights that one off, flips it foul. He's going to fly to Florida after the game. The Royals begin interleague play on Tuesday night at Dodger Stadium. They'll play the Dodgers for three, then go to Denver next weekend. Strike three called. Ricardo Rincon, a huge strikeout to open the eighth. It's Raul Abanez looking. The 0-2 slider away, but look where this starts. Starts more at him, buckles his knees, catches the middle to the inside part of the plate. Not the slider away from Abanez that Hernandez wanted him to chase 0-2. Good pitching by Rencon. Now the switch hitting Beltran. And Maka wants to make sure Beltron bats right-handed where he's been struggling this year. Not nearly as strong from this side as the other side. Strike. <laughs> he ducked under it and fans think of the ball is a little too high, but... Ken Maka had been waiting so long to become a manager. He never knew all these other things go along with it. That's why it's the hot seat. I think he's happy his hair was the color before he started. That's a base set. Beltran past Chavez. So Beltran a one-out single here in the eighth. That'll bring on Mendy Lopez. Lopez. 
That is Jim Masir throwing in the A's bullpen, which uh, he pitched yesterday. Well, that's surprising. We yep. spoke to him last night, and he made it pretty clear that he's unable to pitch back-to-back -back days. He was the winning pitcher yesterday, but I don't know if he's just working the bullpen or if he's preparing to come into the game. Either way, it's a good sign that he's even up and throwing. Mendy Lopez against Barry Zito today, hitless, popped to second, grounded to short, and grounded to third. Strike. Well, maybe a little bit in the upper part, but again, that's the pitch umpires are calling. Rather give you the high or low strike versus the the wide strike. Strike two. Lopez not happy with either one of those calls by Hollowell as he backs out. Struck him out. Boy, Rincon looks sharp today. Strikes out Ibanez to open the inning. Now gets Lopez for the second out. Backdoor slider. Starts away and down, and Lopez swung right over. Now I want to take a chance starting at middle plate and go in and leave it up to where the right-hander, as he opened up, with, could pull the ball. And good backdoor slider. Michael Tucker. He has fly to left, grounded out to short, a great play by Miguel Tejada. And then he bounced out to Hanneberg, unassisted runner, takes off, pitch taken for a strike, throw bounces into center. Jumping up and going to third is Beltran. Royals with three stolen bases today. Foss Beltran has two of them. Now Ramon again bounced the ball a third time and Miguel thought he had a place so he's going to try to scoop it but in this instance should have just gotten his body in front of it to block it. It's going to be very tough to scoop a ball and Beltran had such a great jump anyway he's going to steal it. That's his 10th stolen base of the year. He's 10 of 11 now and he goes to third. Rick Peterson pays a visit to Rincon. It was a strike on the first pitch to Michael Tucker, so it's 0-1. Time is up. Final jeopardy. <laughs> Six to four. Royals have a potential fifth run over third base. Tucker slowly hit ball right to Mark Ellis, though. And that'll be the inning. Ricardo Rincon, a good outing out of the bullpen. We go to the ninth in KC. The A's up six to four. Ninth with the A's up six to four, trying to show them here in Missouri and win three out of four. And the A's will fly to South Florida right after the game. Tuesday night on Action 36 Cable 6, and we'll have the games Wednesday and Thursday from Pro Player for you right here on Fox Sports Net. All the games from Florida beginning at 4 o'clock. Brad Voiles to Scott Hatterberg. And there's ball one. Pitching matchups for the Florida series. Ken Maka goes with Mulder, Hudson, and Lilly. And Jack McKean, one-time manager of the A's, now the uh, Marlins manager after replacing Jeff Torborg, will go with Brad Penny, Mark Redman, and the lefty from Ensenale, Dontrell Williams, uh, Willis, Dontrell Willis. Hatterberg gets ahead in the count, 3-0 against Voiles. Scotty a single his last time up. There's a strike.
Here's one struck to center, but uh, Veltron there, one out. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth. Keith Folk will pitch it. Angel Barroa scheduled to lead off for the Royals. Then Mike D. Felice, although they do have Brent Main as a possible pinch hitter, among others. And like yesterday, Folk will be coming in with at least a two-run lead. Then Desi Rutherford is scheduled. And anybody gets on base, Randa. This one is popped up by Miguel Tejada. Foul ground here is Randa, the Royal third baseman. He's got it. Two outs. So Miguel Tejada a walk, but 0 for 4. And the A's don't want to see extra innings to give him a chance. So the 11-game hit streak may be over today. Did draw a walk. And he scored a run. And the sack fly by die. Now, Rubio Durazo with one of the game's big hits. So he had a couple. He actually singled after Tejada walked, and that pushed Tejada to third, and then he scored on dissect fly. But after the Royals came back to tie the game at four, Rubio Durazo led off the top of the eighth with a double to dead center off of Rick DeHart, the lefty out of the bullpen, and then he scored on Ramon Hernandez, two-out single to make it five to four. So two hits and two runs scored for Durazo today. Pulls this one just foul. Wide of Mendy Lopez down the line. It's great to see Durazo making the adjustments. Of course, in the American League for the first time and came right out of the shoot first game, hitting an opposite field home run, a big night. And no doubt, the scouting reports pitch him accordingly. And he has made adjustments where he's got pitches in and been able to pull them. And I think more than anything, he's kept the opposing teams kind of not knowing how to pitch it because he has adjusted so well. Yeah, he'll be back in the National League for a brief spell here, Ray, with an interleague play starting on Tuesday. And he'll have some career numbers to look at against these Marlin pitchers, as will Scott Hatterberg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Being a member of the Red Sox and in the American League East, he has played some of these National League East teams. I think just as important uh, to be able to maybe give a scouting report on some of the pitchers if if they're familiar with them. Durazo probably more so well maybe than Hatterberg although that it was here last year but any help you can get especially in interleague it's beneficial. De Felice wants a fastball and that's not a good one. Bounced by Boyles. Boyles has a very good curveball and he walks Durazo there with a couple of outs and now face Jermaine Dye. I think for Dan Feinstein, the uh, A's video coordinator, is a walk in a backhanded attempt by right DeFelice. He's thinking about the uh, Montreal Expos. They're having a tough time getting some video on them because they're not televising games. And I think the Rangers, when they play them in uh, San Juan, someone said the Rangers aren't even televising, which I find hard to believe because it seems they televise every game. Adam Roden back at the Coliseum uh, doing a lot of videotaping and of the National League teams. So Dan Feinstein is doing it here. Has a crew back at the Coliseum putting together all the tapes. They find a way to get it done and the yep. A's uh, pretty good against the National Leaguers. Die grounds out. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Keith Fulton <laughs> will try to close it out and get the A's a 6-4 to four win in KC. The hit streak to 22. Now they're going to watch him play left field. Bernsey was in center. Now he's in left. Singleton enters the game. They play in center. And T. Long, who was in left, now goes to right. So Ken Maka mixing and matching. Burns in left. Singleton center, long and right. And with the A's up six to four, bottom of the ninth, it's time for the folk hero. The A's closer. Keith will try to pick up his 14th save of the year. Glittering numbers, 3-0, 13-15, oh, ERA at two and a quarter. And to work a little bit extra for a save yesterday, gave up three hits, one that was lost by Terrence Long in right field. 
He'll face Angel Baroa to start. And he works him off the corner for a ball. Colt struck out Baroa to start the ninth yesterday. And ideally, you'd like to have a one, two, three inning. Because if you turn it over to the top of the batting order, then you start getting Miranda Sweeney Abanya's Beltran part of the lineup. You don't want to do that. Don't want Sweeney up again. No. Here's a strike. It's the same part of the batting order he came into face yesterday. Got Perot out, got Maine out, and then ball was lost by Long, and uh, Randa came up with a hit, and Sweeney did bat. And he came up with a hit before Harvey lined out to Miguel to win the game. That's up and away. Perot, not the most patient of hitters, but knowing his club is down two runs, he's trying to get on. Three and one. And he fouls it back. They start him young here in Kansas City. <laughs> the rally T-shirts. 3-2. Straight back again. to center right at Chris Singleton. He'll take it for the first out of the bottom of the ninth. Make him swing the bat. That's important. And of course, opposing teams, especially the teams in the central who are familiar and seeing Keith Folk know that he's going to be in the strike zone. Mike T. Felice singled his last time up. That broke the string of uh, 12 consecutive Royals retired by Zito and they came up with another hit and after Zito was knocked out Bradford gave up the game tying hit to Randa to deprive Zito a chance to win today but one of the big outs is when he got Sweeney out to keep it at four and the ace came right back to score two in the eighth. One fouled back and Folk gets ahead of ball and two strikes. Eric Chavez a huge two run homer to give the A's the lead and it's now done in at Minneapolis. The Mariners win that game again. They sweep that series. Well that's impressive. Seattle goes into the dome and wins all four after winning two here. Well, they're six and oh. Uh, and they're two week odyssey. Yep. Now where are they going? The A's are off to Florida and Philadelphia next week. Are they doing the same thing in inverted order? I think we're following each other all the way. Boy. They're except going to Philly and Florida? Yeah, they are. Except their rivalry is what, San Diego and <laughs> That's a huge rival. <laughs> they get all worked up in the Pacific Northwest. Whenever they see Bruce Bochy, <laughs> they go nuts in Seattle. <laughs> The Mariners against the American League Central this year, 24 and 6. Two two pitch. De Felice is stubborn AB. Well, it says something about De Felice and the way he's swinging the bat. Yeah. Tony Pena against the right-hander did not pinch hit Brett Maine. Maine are coming off of couple two or three days of the flu not swinging as well and they fully said I got 292 another foul ball so the A's need this victory here in KC to stay five behind the surging Mariners 
A's and Mariners were tied after 40 games, 25 and 15 apiece. And the A's went to Cleveland for that weekend and uh, lost the first two. Mariners have gone 12 and 3 since, including their win today. The A's 6 and 8, pending the outcome of this one. Closer to 7 and 8 as Polk strikes out De Felice. Crowd not liking Matt Holowell's decision. Two away. Looking away, away, and he's just snuck the fastball inside corner. And it's called tremendous control by Keith Folk to nail the inside part. He stayed away with breaking pitches and fastballs. And DeFelice is arguing, but uh, excellent pitch thrown by the right hand. Guarantee if he was catching, he would want it. But as a hitter, it's a whole different story. One more out to get. Desi Rutherford. Strike. Desi hit that towering uh, drive to right yesterday that T. Long lost. And it wound up going as a triple. And it was off of Keith Folk at a pinch hitting appearance in the ninth. that miss or hit the spot exactly it was a quarter inch off the outside part of the quarter inch that much yeah. that's why they don't quest call tech it. when we need it they don't call it no that's the reason they're not calling it because no quest tech here now it's two and one now look at this pitch this is strike folks look what ramon sets up is that not a strike quarter inch huh yeah just that's about it Ramon moves in more than a quarter inch. Rutherford slaps it foul. Now the A's are a strike away. Count is two and two, trying to win three out of four here after losing the first two of this two week trek. The A's longest road trip in a couple of years in Minneapolis. Royal loss would drop them to 500. 27 and 27, they would be. If Rick Peterson gets one more pitch here from Keith Folk in the right spot. Nope, too far away. Three and two, Randa on deck. And Chavez with his 10th homer of the year. Randa on deck. If Relaford gets on base, that would move Sweeney on deck. Relaford down the line in right field and foul. Caught though. Well, the confidence Keith Folk has in his changeup. Barry Zito struck out Relaford from the, the right side back in the fifth on a 3 2 changeup. Folk tried to do the same here in the ninth. Sweeney in the hole. The ace in the hole for Tony Pena. 3 2 to Desi. Ground ball. It's a hot up. He's got it. And the A's win three out of four in Kansas City. A rough weekend overall at times for Ken Mock and the A's, but on the field, they take three of four and even up their record on this road trip now to three and three. Eric Chavez, a huge home run. And the Casey Royals, after a 16 and three start, uh, right at sea level now, 27 and 27, while the A's go to nine over at 32 and 23. We'll come back. A's win it in KC by the score of six to four to win at three of four. Standing weekend for the A's here in Kansas City. They win the day by a score of six to four, and they win three out of four. And go uh, three and three on the trip now and head off to Florida. Greg Popper, Ray Fossey back with you. I have lost a broadcast partner. Just the two of us alone. Of course, right. we had Jermaine right. Dye right. with us in Cleveland, but Jermaine Dye has been reactivated, made his return here on Friday and came up with a sack fly and a hit today. And J.D. joins us downstairs. How did it feel your first couple of games back? Well, uh, yesterday uh, it was pretty tough on me. I had a lot of drilling going and uh, 
kind of settled down late in the ball game. But today I just came out relaxed and uh, had a chance to sit on the bench yesterday and relax a little bit and let my knee calm down a little bit and came out today and had a pretty good day. Jermaine, you were saying after the ball game, your first and coming back, everything was just kind of whirling around because of just coming back. What did it take for you to settle down today, especially maybe getting the first hit? Well, just to get back with the players and get out here and get a couple innings under my belt and get back in the field of the ball game and uh, you know, once you do that, you know, it's smooth sailing after that. You just go out and, and, and play the game and react to it. You got the first hit the first time up, but a big sack fly uh, the next time up. And uh, was it was it so special to come back here and play in Kansas City? You were talking earlier about how this is just another ballpark, but it must be nice to come back to Kauffman Stadium. Oh, yes, definitely. This is a great ballpark. Great fans out here, and uh, you could see it this year. They're, uh, you know, got a team that got off to a great start. And uh, they're playing really well, and uh, the fans appreciate that, and they're coming out and supporting them. And, you know, for me coming back here, you know, I had a great couple years here, and uh, I really enjoyed it and made it my home for, for about four years. And, uh, you know, it's always great to see, you know, all your friends and, and, and people that you knew here at the ballpark. Jermaine, uh, Greg was talking about your sacrifice fly, but I thought in the eighth inning after Rubio uh, Durazo hit the leadoff double, you made a conscious effort to hit the ball to the right side. You hit the ball in the air, but coming back, how tough was that, especially maybe after the first two pitches inside, but yet you did get it deep enough to right field? Well, you, you know your job and, and what you need to do in that situation, and that was a big uh, inning for us, and we needed to get that run in. And all I want to do is try to get a pitch out over the plate that I can hit the other way and hopefully, uh, you know, hit a ground ball over that way or drive it to the outfield. And I uh, did a great job of doing that, and uh, Ramon came up with a big hit for us. Yes, he did, with two outs to get you guys a nice victory today. J.D., welcome back to Kansas City in the A's lineup. Good to see you again. All right, thanks, guys. Jermaine Dye had a very good weekend here in yeah. Kansas City, Ray. The A's win three out of four. I think it was important to, to get this game today. It was a 4-4 tie after the base hit Bradford gave up, mm -hmm. and the A's have had some tough times in close games like this, but able to execute and get in. The, uh, the big hit from Ramon to, to uh, reclaim the lead there. You know, Greg, after the big loss on Friday, they tried to come back, could not do it, but did it yesterday. They came back to win, coming back again today. And it, it definitely helps a ball club. When you're down and you see your, yourself come back and win ball games, especially late in the game, that really pumps them up, and I'm sure they're going to enjoy the off day tomorrow because of it. Off day in uh, <laughs> South Florida. The A's are going to fly to Fort Lauderdale, and they'll uh, stay just a little bit north of Miami. We'll greet you again on Tuesday night from Pro Player Stadium. We're halfway through this two-week yeah. road trip but a couple of more stops to go as the A's uh, will be a pro player on Tuesday night. Join us for our next broadcast on Action 36 Cable 6 Tuesday. Mark Mulder will pitch against Brad Penny and we'll come back with you on Wednesday and Thursday here on Fox Sports Net as Tim Hudson will face lefty Mark Redman of the uh, Florida Marlins on Wednesday night at 4 o'clock. Beyond the Glory featuring uh, Alonzo Mourning comes your way next. For Ray Fossey, I'm Greg Papa saying so long from Kansas City. You've been watching Oakland A's baseball on Fox Sports Nets.